Hi there, Robin here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the Mackie Pro FX12 V3. This mixer features 12 channel input along with a built-in audio interface with two channels out and four channels in. It also offers features such as compressors, high Z, special effects, and sub-channel options. We're going to be talking about all of these features and more in this video. And here we are. This is the Mackie Pro FX12 V3. It's a 12 channel mixer with an incredible audio interface built into it. Let's get rid of what you can't see right away, which is the audio interface. That happens to be a 24 bit, 192 kilohertz processor that's running the audio interface out of this unit. Two channels to our computer, four channels back into here. It has channel one and two set up into the blend, and then it has channel three and four dedicated on line 11 and 12. We can engage or disengage or run it off at 3.5, but that's super impressive. And the fact that you can run this as two completely separate systems. You can run it as an audio interface for a live stream to your computer, or if you wanna record with it, while using the main controls to run and room separately at a different volume level, which is a big important thing to be able to do with an actual mixer and an audio interface built into it. Now, notice I'm not just saying, oh, with USB connection, because it's a lot more than that. You're also gonna get software with this. You're gonna get Pro Tools first, and you're gonna get Waveform OEM, all part of the Mackie package when you buy this mixer. Now, if we run through the channels, we'll be able to cover all the features on the machine, pretty quickly and pretty easily. Uh, even though we have a wide variety, we have got ourselves seven mic inputs. The first two are used on combo jacks. This is gonna allow us to have high Zs at the bottom. Combo jacks incorporate the quarter inch and the XLR connection into one plug. Uh, the high Zs are gonna now allow us to add guitars directly into this unit. Below that, on the first four channels, you have inserts allowing you to add effects, processors, anything extra directly dedicated to each individual channel. That's available on the first four channels. Below that, across the entire board, you have a low cut. So that's gonna get rid of the bottom end. So if you're using it primarily for talk, podcasts, that sort of thing, or videos like we're doing here, uh, you can get rid of the low background noise. Cause even in this showroom, I can't control the air conditioning and heating duct work uh, from generating that kind of noise. This is gonna be able to cut that out for you as long as it's at 100 Hertz or less. The next knob is the first one on top and it is going to be your gains. That's controlled across the whole board. Uh, on the first four, it controls both the line and the microphone inputs. And then it just, of course, covers the line inputs across the bottom. Below that, across the first four are going to be compressors. Yes, this unit has four of them built in. That's important because compressors aren't cheap and to have four of them is icing on the cake. Uh, and again, compressors are going to basically allow you to not hit the limit of your audio capabilities simply because of gain settings. It will compress the signal more like a balloon, uh, less like just chopping it off. That's what a compressor does. A limiter basically chops it off, compressor squeezes the signal. All the blue buttons across the center portion here are all part of our EQ. Each channel has its own three band EQ. Uh, the top one being the high at 12 kilohertz, the middle at uh, 2.5 kilohertz, then the lows at 80 kilohertz. Below that are the green knobs. The green knobs are going to be our auxiliary monitor outputs. So if you want to set up for a stage, you can do that with monitor outputs right here. Then we have all our effects in yellow, pan left and right across the board right here. Below that, we have our mute option. So without having to make any changes on the actual unit or on the sliders, we can simply just mute out any channel we don't want. And the nice part is on the Mackies, they turn red when they're engaged. Below that, we get into our sliders and the actual controls. Now, this is where instead of running the mixer vertically, we're gonna start looking at things horizontally. Uh, the sliders, of course, adjust and control each individual channel on the mixing board or pairs when we get to five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There are three buttons on each line that are located. The first one says one, two, then it says LR, and then it says PFL solo. It allows us to control a bit of the mixing board and giving us a dedicated output option. We have on this side here, a sub one and two and a main. What this allows us to do is I can assign 
each individual channel either to here or to go directly to the main. If I have just the lead singer, I can give them the left and right straight to main. They're gonna be part of the main output. If I'm grouping, uh, let's say three mics for background singers, I can put them all on channel one and two, allowing me to adjust the volume. Now this is really important because you are going to probably set some people up first, listen to them sing or talk, and then you're going to have maybe the lead performer do it on their own. So the idea is, is to be able to then, after you've made your adjustments on everybody else, on channel two, three, and four, by choosing channel one, two, one, two, one, two, it allows me to then just turn that whole package up and down right from here. Let's say I have an announcer, someone who's going to be narrating the actual show and I have them set up on channel nine and 10 off to the end. I can engage and disengage them just by having that. So again, I can leave their setting and whenever I hit the PFL solo, it automatically turns everybody else's mic off and brings in the actual solo directly into the line. Then when the, the announcer leaves the stage, I can simply just turn them off and it goes back to being the way it was. That's what all these buttons do for you. It really, really puts a lot of control of actually the mix in your hands. So let's move to some of the knobs that are located right in this area here. The two green ones, of course, this is going to be our FX to monitor. So any of our effects that we're playing via our effect. Again, green, because it's in relationship to the monitor, is going to go here. So right here is the aux master. And this is a master volume control going to the monitor send here. Which actual outputs you want to go to the monitor, you're going to turn those up accordingly, depending on how much volume you need to give them. And then this will take all of that and bring it together to one output. You can then turn up and down the monitor from here. Uh, again, putting you in charge of how much volume you're gonna get. The next knob located right of the aux master is called blend. And blend basically allows you to take the two USB channels coming in on channel one and two and blend them with the actual mixer. So you uh, listening to what's going on or playing against what's going on can decide how much of the actual mixer versus how much of your backtrack you want to listen to just by controlling that from here left and right below that we have a button that says two headphones and control room and that's to engage or disengage this function to the actual headphones or control room to the right of that we have volume control for the control room and above that we have volume control for the headphones just at the bottom above the actual main we have a button that's called break mutes all channels and it does exactly that this is a hard mute across the whole board. So if you have to make any rearrangements, uh, you're well personally going on break or you just want to stop using the mixer and you don't want anything going out uh, either to the broadcast or to the room, you just hit that button right there. For the plugs located right on the top, again, we've covered already the monitor send. That's our monitor floor monitors. We've got an FX send. So again, if we want to dedicate our FX to be processed externally, we can do that here. Uh, then we also have just below that, these are going to be our control room outs. I can choose to have two speakers connected directly to the sub channel one and two, which is this slider here. So it's listening in on that. And then I can also have the actual uh, control room speakers hooked up right above that left and right the more plugs the better i always say off to the side of that we have a foot switch a foot switch is going to trigger the actual effects on and off so if i need to turn the effects on and off just with a foot pedal because i'm playing in the band that's a good way to do it below that we have our headphone jack and at the very top right here is our main outputs uh, we've got xlr and we've got quarter inch balance or unbalance all here on the very top of the unit facing the front we have our power, our power switch, and our USB connection. So before we actually get to the effects, why don't we actually switch to the mixer and we're gonna to listen to the mixer through a condenser microphone and we're gonna sample out the effects and the mixer as a whole. So here we are, we're now running off the actual mixer. Uh, that's why we have an XLR plug. We now have a condenser. I didn't wanna go crazy on the actual microphone. So we are using a PDMIC70, which I enjoy using. It's not over the top. It comes across really well and it's reasonably priced. So now you know everything you hear is the mixer and not some fancy $500 microphone. Uh, note that if you're hearing a hiss or a background or any humming sounds, that's the room. I am not gonna run this through a noise canceling filter or anything like that in the software because I want you to hear the mixer. Anything else I would do to it would be in the software and I just don't think that's appropriate. So what's going on here? 
we have the high Z off because we don't have a guitar plugged in. We do have the low cut filter on, but that doesn't really help my showroom out too much. Our gains are set at about 60%. We're not using a compressor because I'm just talking and I'm within reasonable check here for volume. And uh, then we have our EQ set at the Unity. I could turn those down and up again. That's the high. This is the mids right here, plus minus 15. And again, we're going to do the lows. Uh, the next would have been monitors. We're not using those. Our effects are right now off, but we do have them set to 50%, so we can demonstrate that. And our pan and tilt. Right now, we're in Unity. I can go to the left channel, or I can go to the right channel, because this is a two-channel out. This does affect the sound in your ear. We don't have anything engaged here except for the left, right to main, because I'm controlling the volume here. So my, I'm at Unity here. I'm at Unity here. I have this engaged, which allows me to see the meters and run this whole system either live or through the USB as we're listening to it right now. So let's uh, let's take a listen to the effects. Which one should we choose? So to engage number three, all I need to do is push enter and here it is but again we still don't have because we don't have any of the effects turned up so we'll bring this up here and there we go that is number three that is warm theater so we're listening to warm theater right now and if we wanted to go to something else and again we can control how loud that is or how intense just by using that control right here um, if we wanted to try something else something a little crazier slap back reverb so let's go to 24 give that a try so that, so that is, is slapback slap reverb. reverb. I didn't I know what, didn't know what that, that was. was. I, I now, now do know, know what slapback slap reverb, reverb is. is. And, and, uh, and that's really what it's all about. I mean, you can play around with this all you want all day long. You're either going to like it or dislike it. And how much you use or not use is going to be up to you. Uh, again, right here, that's the selector to choose which effect we want to have. You press in, it's on. If you don't want it, if you need to mute it for any purpose, you just hit the button there and it's gone again. And that's pretty much it. There's, you know, we can talk about this mixer all day. There's so many things on it, but at the end of the day, it's a Mackie mixer. This is what they're known for. This is their bread and butter. When it comes to products, they know how to make mixers and they do their best to make a product that's gonna last many, many years. This is brand new. Uh, it came out this year, I guess, 2020, late 2019, but it's going to be around for quite a, quite a while, that's for sure, before they come out with a version 4. So if you're looking for their newest product with sliders, with all the features on it, this is where you start, the Pro FX12 V3. Well, I hope this video helped you out. We're going to wrap it up now. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.